What's the best oil for your motorcycle? Let's talk about that. Good Moto Morning. Welcome to another episode of Kraken's Garage. I'm your host, Eric, and on this channel, we discuss all things on two wheels. Today's topic is going to be on what is the best oil for your bike. Let's get cracking. If you belong to any uh, motorcycle forums, one sure way to start a fist fight is post what's the best oil question on any thread, on any forum. That could be Kawasaki, Harley Davidson, KTM, and people come out swinging and are adamant about what oil they like to choose. I'm gonna talk to you about what Kraken uses and why I do and my thoughts behind that. Maybe shed some light on the topic. When you go to change your oil, do not just start the bike and let it run for five minutes. It has not gotten up to oil operating temperature. A quick tip before you change your oil is to go out and ride it 20 to 30 minutes to get the bike fully at operating temperature. If there's an oil cooler on your bike, it opens that up so that when you do change the fluids, it drains out of that oil cooler as well. Typically for Harleys in particular, that temperature runs around 230 degrees Fahrenheit or 110 degrees centigrade. Now in your owner's manual, in most of them, for almost all makes and models, they have a section in your owner's manual, manual that states, here's how you change your oil and some basics on it. If you haven't purchased a service manual, you should. And if you check your service manual, it will go into great more depth about what oil to use in your bike. Most people don't really bother to read, read those items and kind of digest that thought process because they're very brand driven oils. It could be Mobile One or it could be Harley Sim 3 or something like that, depending on the bike. I can't speak for other manufacturers, but Harley has a uh, table that they uh, post in, in their service manual, and I'll post it up here. And what's more important here, or the goal, I should say, is to pick an oil that's thick enough to quiet your motor down, but thin enough to start it in cold weather. Inherently, uh, the V-twins uh, that are air-cooled are loud motors. They're, their valves chatter and things of that nature. Thus usually the requirement for a thicker oil. That's not the same for an inline four on a Japanese bike like a Kawasaki or a Honda or Yamaha or Suzuki. In the case of the Harley, they offer basically three different levels of viscosity for your bike. You have a 20W50, you have a 50, and then you have a 60. The 50 and 60 are something that I use in my Sportster during the summertime. It's a much thicker oil, and no, I don't use synthetic because the Evo design motor is, uh, requires, in my opinion, a, a kind of thicker oil to operate it. You're certainly not gonna hurt it using a synthetic. So either one I would recommend. Now in the case of the uh, M8, the Milwaukee 8 in my Street Glide, I'm going to use a 20W50, which is a Sin 3 right here, for summertime riding. Come wintertime, I'll use a thinner oil viscosity, which is easier on the bike starting during the cold winter months. So there's all types of aftermarket oils that are available for especially the big V-twins, because that's a huge part of the North American market. You have AMS oil, Mobile One, V-twin, you have uh, cast oil, uh, Royal Purple, Spectro, Redline, and there's a plethora of others. There's plenty, certainly plenty to choose from, and they're all really good oils. So you can make an argument for any one of those oils that it's the best oil for your bike, quote unquote. What's the most important thing is that your engine has oil. And I make that state, statement kind of tongue in cheek. I mean, people, how often do you really check your oil in your bike? Do you check it before every ride? When you take a long ride, do you check it during the ride? Common physics for like the uh, Roadster and you burn regular dyno oil is the oil is going to heat up and it will burn off. Even when we're talking about my Benelli TNT 135, you're talking about a thumper that's running at 9,000 RPM. And if I take a long trip, a 500 mile day, you are going to burn some oil. It should be given that you should check your oil on a regular basis, not when it's cold, but when it's at operating temperature. And again, let's refer to that 20 to 30 minute ride to check it at operating temperature. That will give you your true reading on what the bike's oil level is, and you may need to top it off as it's burning it off, which is what an air-cooled single cylinder or V-twin inherently does. 
Now in the case of the Harleys, you have uh, also a gear oil and a lot of people just throw whatever the engine oil is in the gearbox. I don't really recommend that. I mean, Harley had Formula Plus for a long time, but they never printed on it what the viscosity was. So it was a little sketchy in my opinion, and I wasn't a fan of that if I don't know how thick the oil is or how thin it is. They came out with a heavy duty synthetic gear oil, which is 8W. 140 and that I highly recommend over using a 20w50 in your gear uh, It's a totally different function and requires a different viscosity So try not to use your engine oil in your drive trim as well You see all types of oils I have up here. So what oil does Kraken use? Well, it depends on which bike I'm rolling with if I'm rolling with my electric glide I'm using Sin 3 synthetic a good alternative to that that's easily to get your hands on is mobile 1 V twin is another great choice in my opinion. But given the choice, I'll take the Screaming Eagle Sin 3 over it. If I'm running a Yamaha, I'm gonna use a uh, synthetic Yamaha oil. In the case of my Vespa, uh, Piaggio doesn't make any oils, so uh, what they recommend is Motul. If you're rocking a Honda, then I rock the GN4 Sin oil. And then uh, you have a separate gear oil that uh, they use on the Vespas as well, which is made by uh, Motorex. There's a lot of different oils here that we're displaying here, and, and the, your takeaway from this discussion is, if you're on the road and you need to top off your oil, and you didn't bring any, and you use some of these off the beaten path ones, like Am's Oil or Royal Purple and things of that nature, it's not like you can go down to the local bike shop and pick some up. They may or may not have it. But if I go down to the Harley shop, they will definitely have Sin 3. They will definitely have Gear Oil. If I go to the Honda shop, they will definitely have GN4 sitting on the shelf waiting for you. If I go to Yamaha, they will definitely have Yamaha Lube sitting on the shelf. Same goes for Motul for my Vespa. So wherever I'm traveling nationwide, I just go to my local dealer and they have exactly what I want sitting on the shelf and I'm off and rolling again. What you don't want to do is mix any of these oils. So, uh, they're not going to play well in the sandbox usually together. In a case of an emergency, then you do what you got to do. But uh, under normal circumstances, try to use the same oil. I get asked a lot synthetic versus regular oil. And my answer to that is a question back to the person that's asking it. You have to be true to yourself. Are you going to ride this bike 2,000 miles a year and in five years sell it with 10,000 miles on it? Is it worth your hard earned money to spend $16.95 on a quart of a Synth 3 in your bike versus a $10 quart of standard Dyna oil for your Harley or something of that nature? It's not a big jump in price. Most people spring for the sin, but in my opinion, if you're not gonna ride the bike, like you drive your car 100,000 miles, you're not gonna drive your bike 100,000 miles, you're flushing money down the toilet. Plain old dyno has been working fine for 100 years. It will work fine for many decades more to come. So don't spring for the sin. If you're in for the long term on your bike and you say, you know, I'm gonna own this bike and I'm gonna put 50,000 miles on it and I'm gonna rock it hard over the next five years, then by all means, I highly recommend sin. So the argument dyno versus synthetic oil depends on your usage. It doesn't add one penny value to your bike when you go to sell it. You could tell the uh, buyer of your used bike till you're blue in the face what you've done. They're not gonna believe you. They're gonna basically be looking at the bike and the condition of it and going from there. Regarding whether you use synthetic or regular dyno oil, I don't think there, it's gonna make one hill of a beans of a difference between one versus the other in the decision to buy your bike. So think about your long-term usage may make, help you make the decision on which oil to use. So in conclusion, uh, my, my thoughts are, buy the oil that you feel good about, it makes you sleep better at night, and you, you feel really good about having it in your, your beloved bike. Be true to yourself, answer your own questions about longevity and how long you're going to use the bike and how many miles you are actually gonna put on it. Not dream about putting on it, actually put on the bike, and that will help you make your decision along the road. At the end of the day, my suggestion is just go with an OEM oil. They're easy to get a hold of in a pinch when you're on the road. I mean, why would I not use an oil that's made for my bike and designed specifically for my bike by the manufacturer through an oil company? Just makes perfect sense to me. 
And to all my end watchers, I'm rocking my Australia hat. That should give you a clue. Today's shout out goes to Bikes, Burgers, and Beers. He has 867 subs. He has 153 videos out. His channel is for Aussie motorcyclists when he originally started it, but he throws in all the things that he loves in life. Bikes, burgers, and beers in particular, guitar amps, and fixing things are what his love of his life is. He enjoys learning about stuff as well. I do too. I really enjoy looking up YouTube videos that teach me something new every day of my life. He's rocking a Royal Enfield Classic 500, and I believe he also has a Sportster as well. He's also a member of the Distinguished Gentleman Ride. That is a charity organization that we'll shoot a video on on another day. Be sure to check him out. He does a tremendous job. His film and editing skills are top notch. He has a broad range of videos. He's also a watch guru as well, for which you'll see me rocking different watches in almost every video I make. So I, I the, one of my soft spots in my heart is watches. Please give him a shout out. Look at his channel. If you happen to like his channel and subscribe, tell him Kraken sent you. And there's my ghost dog bourbon telling me to wrap things up. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. If you want to see more in the future, hit that subscribe button right down there in the corner. And remember, folks, go riding. It's good for you, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.